Welcome to a new pink tongue skink video. Now this is one I've been wanting to make as soon as I found out this new information because I feel like it needs to be passed on to every pink tongue skink owner who thinks their skink isn't growing or their skink is a picky eater. So let's take it back to the beginning. I got Rex, he was about three months old. He came from a shop that had said they bought it off a local breeder. They said he's been eating crickets fine, which I thought was really bizarre because Pink tongue skinks generally just eat snails and slugs, but I know some people will introduce different foods when they're young, so they're not as picky as adults. So I thought, okay. Now I got the skink, Rex, and when I got him, he was about three months old and two grams, which kind of was a red flag to me, but I thought, you know what? Whatever happened in the shop, I can help him out, give him the right diet. He's got a nice setup, heating, lighting, UV. Um, we're gonna do this, right? Two months into it, I weighed him, he was 2.6 grams. Every week I'd weigh him, he would go up a gram or go down a gram. So I actually ended up getting jeweler's scales just so I could see that point something. But this still wasn't right to me because I was like, there's no way he should be this small and growing like not this much at all every week. Um, now, every time I consulted someone about it, I would tell them everything I'm doing. They said, you seem like you're doing everything right. Um, but pink tongue skinks are picky, is a slow growers, you just got to keep with it. Now I was offering him frozen snail meat, obviously defrosted, and it was human grade. Now this is one that I saw on various skink Facebook groups, something that a lot of people recommended. Uh, they'd always say go to a Chinese market and get it. I actually ordered it online. This specific one as well was recommended. And what I do is I'd get a bit and shave tiny tiny bits off of it so he could eat it in one because it was very tough and rubbery um and he would eat it but not enthusiastically uh, the most consistent we had it he was eating bits um every other day and even then he wasn't gaining weight and i was like this can't go on like he is he's shed and he didn't change at all after the shed he still looked like a hatchling so I asked the shop if I could get in contact with the breeder because I wasn't getting any good advice anywhere. On the Facebook groups, I'm a lurker rather than a contributor. I look at other people's questions that they've asked and a lot of people are in a similar situation to me having pink tongue skink babies that aren't growing, um, they're not sure what to do. And even someone was asking, what's the difference between frozen snails, live snails, like, is it totally fine? Um, and everyone said, yeah, they're fine. I got in contact with the breeder and as soon as I told her what I was doing, the frozen snails were the issue. Now it's not that they're frozen, but it's that they're human grade. So likely they are boiled a little bit or cooked a little bit before frozen, obviously to make them safe for humans. And this just does not smell or taste as good as a raw snail. So I was already about to move towards getting him live snails to see, you know, if he'd eat that more. And the breeder recommended, yes, use either live snails or take snails um, and freeze them yourself because that way they're still that raw snail. They still smell like a snail, but you can store them and you can use bigger snails and cut them up for the skink. And so that's what I realised. Ah, there are some people using frozen snails are literally like snails they have frozen. And there are some people who are using human grade snails like me that are frozen but aren't as good. Now... I'm new to the skink world, so I don't want to totally knock that because maybe some people have real success with human grade snails. But if you are finding yourself in the same situation where you have these human grade safe Asian market snails, no, you know, they haven't been treated with anything. They've probably just been cooked or boiled a little bit before being frozen and your skink isn't eaten. Ditch those. I have about 500 grams in my freezer that I now need to ditch. But, um go for either live snails or freeze your own snails. One thing the breeder did recommend is she would go out and get snails, like garden snails that haven't been around pellets, like to poison them or anything, um, feed them carrots for a week till they were pooping pure orange and then freezing them. I'm trying to stay away from wild corn. There seems to be like a national shortage of captive garden snails, uh, like feeder snails. So a lot of people are turning to giant African land snail babies because a lot of um, snail keepers end up with so many babies that they need to get rid of. And so that's what I've done. Like he has currently cost me about just over two pounds a day to feed. So he is probably my most expensive reptile to feed. 
But you know what? Seeing this progress, it's completely worth it. And I've actually now got some giant Afrin land cells to breed myself. So their eggs, their babies can be fed to Rex and hopefully it won't cost as much as it is right now. So in this footage you can see he's actually hunting down his first, probably his first ever a whole snail because likely when he was with the breeder he was eating bits of snail meat, when he was in the shop I don't think he was eating any of this and with me he's only had frozen thawed snail meat. So this is the first time he's breaking down the whole thing and this took him 45 minutes in total um but he got there and since then so he's eaten three snails a day friday to sunday he did this right and he got quicker and quicker at doing it friday to sunday he went from 2.6 grams to 3.3 which is 0.7 grams which does not sound like a lot but if i worked out correctly it's a 28 percent increase in his weight over three days so i will up, do an update wait here just to let you know how he's doing so far as I'm editing because it's only going to be a few more days on but he is noticeably getting bigger chunkier his colors are changing he shed again and he like now looks starting to look brown he's always been feisty or huffy um which is completely understandable because he's so tiny he's from australia everything wants to eat you and apparently this is so normal in the first year of owning a pink tongue skink and then they get to about a year old and they just are like puppy dogs so his feistiness i am all here for and he has become a little more feisty um since he's been eating more which in my opinion is excellent to see he's got the energy for it now when i saw his siblings the same litter that he was from, they were all 25 to 30 grams. It already had their pink tongues. I was mortified. So I just really wanted to pass on this information to any future, current, new pink tongue skinks who are struggling. They are finding their skink isn't really growing, isn't really eating. Switch to live snails or frozen snails that you've frozen yourself that are still raw. It makes a massive difference. Another thing the breeder did is, so she would predominantly use frozen snails that she would defrost and cut up the meat for them and then she'd mix it in with Omni Gold and they loved it. I'm going to um, include some footage she showed me of, this is one of Rex's siblings. Like he's so much bigger. Um, so it was fascinating to see. As I said, I felt absolutely mortified. I felt like I read all the advice there is online. I literally took that advice and it screwed me over. So I'm just hoping that passing on this advice to you guys will uh, help, especially if you're in a similar situation. I will keep you updated with Rex's progress. So if you aren't already, please subscribe or follow me on Instagram and um, I'll show you how he's getting on. Hopefully in a month or so time, we can just be like, look, he's a whole different lizard. Um, so yeah. Anyway, I hope this video has helped. Thank you for watching guys and goodbye. <laughs>